Let's talk mutton snapper rigs. Welcome to the Good Karma Sport Fishing Podcast. I'm your host, Captain Ryan Van Fleet. First, I encourage you guys to learn how to make your own mutton snapper rigs or grouper rigs or wahoo rigs. So in this podcast, I'm going to walk you guys through the steps for tying a wind-on light tackle leader, the exact leader that I use for mutton snapper fishing in deep water. Now this is this is the leader that I use for targeting mutton snappers, not for targeting groupers, for targeting mutton snappers. And also guys, a lot of those really big tunas that you see I catch, I catch them while I'm mutton snapper fishing on this setup. That's another reason why I like to use light line. Really big blackfin tunas can see everything. Since I use 30 pound fluorocarbon line, extremely long leaders, I catch a lot of big blackfin tunas while I'm mutton snapper fishing with the setup I'm going to talk about. Now, my podcasts aren't scripted anymore. I used to have to sit down and write out my entire show and try to read it. And you guys can tell when you go back and listen to the the original episodes, but I don't script anything anymore. I just sit down and talk and, but this podcast had the, I had to script it a little bit because it's more of a technical podcast in, in steps. So I'm going to be reading a lot off of a little script here. So I, that I took the time to write. And also too, you're going to be able to find this exact step-by-step step in the show notes. So I took a lot, of, I spent a lot of time on this as far as laying things out for you guys. So I hope you appreciate it and you get something out of it. So first, step one, and how to make a light tackle wind-on leader for mutton snappers. The first thing I do is I double 30-pound braid main line using a spider hitch knot. Now all my reels are loaded with that. I All the reels that I use for mutton snapper fishing are loaded with 30-pound braided line, 30 pound braided power pro line. Now I use Talica 16s and Talica 20s for mutton snapper fishing. Okay. So a lot of you guys ask, why do I use a spider hitch knot? First, a spider hitch knot is simpler to tie than a bimini twist. And by doubling the 30 pound braided line using a spider hitch knot, I increase the bra- breaking strength of the 30 pound braided line by 20 to 30 percent more than its manufactured rating so in other words i'm making a lot hell of a lot stronger (laughs) now why do i do this number one we hook a lot of big fish on the bottom not just mutton snappers we're hooking amberjacks we're hooking giant groupers you name it and just recently guys we i i had i was trolling with this setup not on the bottom. I was trolling with it on the surface, and we hooked a big. We hooked a blue marlin over 250 pounds on 30 pound. Okay, and I was not worried about the main line breaking because of the spider hitch. I had so much confidence in that, in that spider hitch that it held. That 30 pound braid held. So just to let you know, 30 pound is really strong if you use a spider hitch. <laughs> so, and. That blue marlin just shows you that it's strong. It didn't break. Now, my clients are able to with that double braid with that double braided spider hitch. The clients can now can fight larger fish at stronger um, drag settings. So we can just end the fight. If if we're into a really large amberjack, we just crank up the drag and we we get the fish in really quick. Because nine times out of ten, my clients are not wanting to fight an amberjack. They just want to target mutton snappers and groupers. So we just tighten up the drag so we can shorten the fight and get back to mutton snapper fishing. Okay, so some other questions I've been getting about the braided line is, why do you use 30-pound braided line, Captain Ryan? So here's why I use 30-pound. Remember, everybody's different. I have found a 30-pound braided line spooled on the reels for mutton snapper gives me a lot of line capacity. This allows us to fish greater depths at ease 
with smaller lightweight reels. Okay, so like I said, I use Shimano Talica 16s and 20s, and I just load them full of 30 pound braid. We can fit a lot of 30 pound braid on those reels. Now, when we do hook a large fish, and I've hooked several wahoos while, while I've been fishing for mutton snappers with live bait on the bottom. You have to remember you're using an extremely long leader, so the fish that you're not, that that live bait swimming up and down throughout the column. So I'll talk about that in another podcast. I'm getting off, off I'm getting sidetracked here. So now I play, like I said, I have plenty of line capacity on that smaller reel. Therefore, I don't have to worry about, you know, getting spooled. And I don't really worry about getting spooled. My clients start to freak out sometimes, but I don't. I'm like, oh gosh, you know, we're, we'll be fine, guys. Don't worry. So we just got to take our time. We'll get every all the line. We get all the lines in. We eventually just chase down the fish. And it makes it really easy for the clients to get the Wahoo boat side on light tackle. Now, because the 30-pound braided line has an extremely small diameter, it does cut through the water really nice, and it finds the bottom pretty easily for me in all types of wind, current, and sea conditions. I love 30-pound braided line when it comes to bottom fishing in deeper water, guys. I, I just do. I've used 40. I've seen the difference between 40 and 50 pounds. 30 pounds just performs better for me. But you have to do the spider hitch. If you don't do the spider hitch, you're going to break off a lot of you're going to break off a lot of fish. You need to double that line before you connect it to the fluorocarbon. Okay, so step two is a little tricky. And step, and I get questioned a lot about this as well. But this works for me. And I, it's, it catches a lot of mutton snappers. You can go back through and look at the pictures. <laughs> so I've got a lot of street cred with this rig. And if you don't believe me, just go back and look. We've caught some big mutton snappers, up to 25 pounds. Some, some I think were a little bigger. I wish I had a scale, but I don't carry a scale because I think carrying a scale is bad luck. Okay, so here's what I do. This is a little extra step in this, and a lot of guys don't like to do it because it's an extra step, and extra steps work. But catching fish consistently and big fish is hard work. So if you're willing to put in the work with this rig, you're going to catch big fish. So here it is. I tie a two foot piece of 40 pound fluorocarbon and it's 40 pound fluorocarbon, not 50 or not 60 and not 30. It's 40 pound fluorocarbon to the 30 pound braid double line using a Bristol knot. I have found that over the years, 40 pound fluorocarbon leader tied to a 30 pound braid double line using a bristol knot is strong 40 pound ties really nice 40 pound braided or i'm sorry 40 pound fluorocarbon ties really nice to 30 pound braid to a 30 pound braid double line using a bristol knot and the knot is really strong now i don't tie 50 pound i don't tie 60 pound a 40 pound for this rig okay 40 pound that's what I use. Now I use 40 plant. I, I, I've been questioned on what I use as far as fluorocarbon. I use 40 pound pink Yozuri. It's a softer fluorocarbon. It, it ties really well. It works really well with braid. I've been using this. I buy it in bulk. I go through a lot of it. It's a great, I just feel that th that 30 pound Yozuri is really nice to work with. And I've seen various underwater videos of it. And I don't see it, <laughs> so I know it. I know it's it. It works very well. But some other notes on why I do this, why I tie a two foot piece of forty pound fluorocarbon to the thirty pound braid double line using a Bristol knot. So here's, I get a lot of questions on this, so I hope I cover the questions that people have been asking. So here what here it goes. So I wrote all this stuff down for you guys. So here it is. Again, a lot of this stuff is my opinions and experience. And you have to remember that I fish, a, I do a lot more bottom fishing than a lot of guys out there. This short piece of fluorocarbon leader is used for attaching the removable inline sinker. I use a removable inline sinker. 
a lot of guys they use their removable inline sinkers. They use swivels and stuff, but I use balloon Fisher King inline um, inline um, removable weights, and I make these. And I'll talk about that in a future podcast. But today I'm just going to talk about my rig. And I'll also put it up in my show notes. You'll be able to see the pictures of the Bloom Fisher King weights. But I'm going to save that for another podcast because today we're just talking about the rig itself. Okay. Next, I found that the standard Bloom Fisher King clips, I talk a little bit, a lot about the Bloom Fisher King clips because that's what I use. They work very well on 40, 40 pound fluorocarbon line, but I do struggle a little when attaching these pressure clips to the fluorocarbon line greater than 40 pound fluorocarbon. In other words, I do struggle a little bit. I learned that it, they don't work as well with 50 pound, at least the standard Bloom Fisher King clips. Now I do, they do make some, they do make um, clips that are for, for like heavier line, but I don't use those. They're a little bit, as far as my charter business goes, I have to watch my costs and I'm not sponsored by Bloom Fisher King. So, meaning that I don't get these clips for free, I buy them myself. So I just use the standard Bloomfisher King clips, and I buy them off Amazon or wherever I can find them, and I buy them in bulk. So I have found that the standard clip, it works very well on 40-pound and 30-pound, but 40-pound works the best. Now, next, uh, the fluorocarbon leader has no stretch, and it's capable of handling greater weight than monofilament fishing line or braid, making it perfect for attaching heavy inline weights for mutton snapper fishing in the Florida Keys. Next, another benefit of this short connection is that it acts as a buffer connection between the braided line and the long leader connection, which I'll talk about here in a second. Now, for example, when I need to replace the long leader line for any reason, I just simply cut at the swivel connection where the long leader is connected to the 40 pound and retie it quickly. So then I don't have, it saves me a lot of time because I don't have to retie the spider hitch braid and working with braid in the wind can be challenging. And I don't like to tie braided line in the wind. It, it frustrates me, especially with, when I'm with clients. So I have numerous rods rigged and ready in case I have a braid failure as far as getting caught on the bottom or or something. So, or if there's a bad spot in the brain, which rarely happens, but shit happens on the water. You just never know it's fishing. Next, I use a bristle knot. I mentioned the bristle knot earlier because number one, the bristle knot is just an awesome knot. Learn how to tie it. And it has a smaller profile than most. And it passes through my rod guides with ease. Next, I get an extremely strong knot when I tie this short piece of fluorocarbon line to the 30 pound braided main line using a bristol knot, I mentioned that earlier. Floor, next is, I talk about fluorocarbon does, does have a smaller line diameter than monofilament. So it does make it a little easier for me to attach that balloon fisher king uh, removable inline weight to the short piece of fluorocarbon. More so than when I use monofilament. And I talked about that as well a little earlier. Okay, so let's stop and summarize where we're at right now. Right now, in creating this leader, I have 30-pound braided line that's doubled over using a spider hitch. I've connected a, a two-foot piece of 40-pound fluorocarbon to the double braided line using a Bristol knot which is extremely strong. And then at the terminal end of this short piece of fluorocarbon, which measures out to be two feet about, I tie a 70 pound diamond brand ball bearing swivel. Okay, so now we're gonna create the long leader that everybody talks about when it comes to mutton fishing. Why do you need a long leader? Do you use a long leader? Yes, I use a long leader. Eight out of ten times, I I measure out seventy to one hundred feet of thirty pound fluorocarbon leader. I use thirty pound fluorocarbon leader. Fluorocarbon, not monofilament. Fluorocarbon, and why do I use fluorocarbon? Now, everybody says, well, you don't need fluorocarbon. Listen, 
I use fluorocarbon not just because it's invisible to it's you know supposed to be invisible to fish, which it is most of the time. <laughs> so I don't know, but fluorocarbon line has incredible abrasion resistance. Okay, you have to remember we're fishing coral bottom, rock bottom, wrecks. It withstands a lot of abuse on the bottom. And it lasts throughout the day, okay? It lasts. When I'm charter fishing, I need stuff to last. Also, there's minimal stretch, so the stuff does not twist when used with the proper ball bearing swivel. Now, I used to use Spro swivels. I don't anymore because what happened was is that the stuff was twisting up. And I've seen a difference in Spro's manufacturing over the past year and a half. I don't know what happened with the swivels, but... I started seeing a lot more line twists. So I made the switch to diamond ball bearing swivels. And now I can go a full day into the next day with the same leader. And now every day my leaders are inspected and, and you know, most of the time I change them out if need be, but they're, they're just lasting a lot longer. And I see your guys say, oh, those swivels are so expensive, but not near the price of fluorocarbon line. And since I made the change, I spent, I think I spent like $11 or $12 on four or five swivels. These four or five swivels last, last me. They very rarely break off and they've, they've just been awesome. And they saved me a ton of money in fluorocarbon lines. So, okay, so you may be thinking how the diamond ball bearing swivels save me money. Let me tell you. They significantly reduce line twists compared to all the other brands I've used. Not only line twists, but weird-ass tangles, man. Weird-ass tangles. So, I'm sticking with the diamond ball bearing swivels until I see something goofy happy, but I've been using them all summer, and I've used them into the, I'm using them into the fall, and they're kicking ass, so I'm not switching <laughs> anytime soon, like I said. Okay. So now you've got your long leader tied on, and now we're just getting into some you know, some terminal stuff here. I, you know, tying on the hooks. I prefer to use circle hooks. I use either Gamagatsu or owner brand. I don't really have a preference. One thing I tell guys is that you have to size the hooks appropriately to the live bait because a lot of guys, oh, your hook size don't matter. But if you're looking to catch like Big blackfin tunas while you're mutton fishers, mutton fish and small hooks do matter because of the eyesight of that tuna. That's one fish that I really believe is is that you got to have light line when you're live bait fishing, especially to catch those big blackfin tunas. They have such big eyes that they see everything and they're they can be really shy. So you have to size the hooks appropriately for the live bait, and if you're looking to catch Big black fins while you're mutton snapper fishing, use small hooks. That's a little tip for you. Small hooks do catch big fish, man. Woo, they do. I prefer, um, like I said, I prefer using clinch knots to tie my knots. I'm not, like, a lot of guys will use different knots. I, I've been using a clinch knot for years, and I'm confident in it. And once I tie the knot, I triple check it before it goes in the water. Yeah, I tie a lot of knots, but every day is different. It depends on how much moisture is in the air and how the lines behave in or how slippery my hands are. It's just, or there's so many different factors. So I'm always checking the my knots. I always do. I'm just in the habit of doing that. And, okay, so let's get on to the other stuff here. This is just basic stuff. I kind of went through all the technical aspects of the rig, but next is hooking the live bait. I, I hook the, uh, when I'm power drifting or slow trolling for on the bottom for mutton snappers using the engines, I, um, I always hook the, uh, the live bait through the nostrils. And then I, I talked about the baiting buttons before. Uh, I, you can use like bait buttons, rubber bands, all sorts of stuff to peg a live bait onto the hook. Now I do this so the bait doesn't foul. When you're dropping a, a live bait down 200 to 300 feet, you want to have a lot of confidence that bait's not fouling. And when you're fishing using, when you're using like pilchards, they have really soft nostrils and they like to wrap around on the hook. So I found that by using like bait buttons and little zip ties on the hooks, it keeps the live bait 
from wrapping Oberon itself. It just gives me a little bit more confidence that my bait's being presented correctly on the bottom to the fish and it went down right by using the bait buttons, by using a bait button or any type of stop bait stopper. Next, uh, setting the live bait. So it gets a little tricky. So I set the live bait uh, by, by doing this. I'll like, I feed out the line I'll feed out the line with the, the live bait on the hook. I'll put the reel in free, free spool. I'll power the boat forward a little bit to get the bait swimming behind the boat, get the leader stretched out, make sure there's no issues. I take my time. If I don't take my time, that's when shit gets messed up out there, man. A lot of people get too antsy. The antsiness works against you. I work very quickly and very efficiently. There's a process, I tell people. There's a process to how I bottom fish. And before we even start, I let them know that there's a process and they just have to be patient. And if they get too antsy, I'm like, maybe we should go do something else. But then I show them the pictures of what we can catch. And most of the time, they they kind of like, they get quiet and they're like, okay, we trust you. You got you to gotta trust your captain. I've been doing this a long time when it comes to targeting these big muttons. So... Anyways, enough of that. Now, I do have a significant advantage on setting my live baits now when I'm bottom fishing because I can use my Rodan trolling motor. I don't have to bump the engine in and out of gear. So what I do is I have a Rodan 120-volt um, 120 volt, 120 volt trolling motor, and I put it in track mode. I put it on course to how I want to set. So this allows me to set the baits correctly. I don't have to worry about bumping the engines in and out of gear because I can use my remote control. It's just a, it's, it's a Cadillac, man. It takes bottom fish into a whole new level. Now, what the Rodan toy motor also does is that it gives me a significant advantage on days with light current and no wind. So I can, I can create current, which is awesome. And I can create that perfect knot and a half current that mutton snappers love with that Rodan toy motor. It's just, it's awesome. And I'm catching a lot more fish since I started using that on days when it, when conditions are on days when conditions are challenging, man. So significant advantage. It's awesome. Okay, so once that leader's stretched out and the bait's behind the boat, you have to. The next thing I do is I attach the pressure clip, or you can attach your weight however you want to do it. But um, anyways, I use a pressure. I use the Bloom Fisher King. Um, weight system that I put together and what I do is I pressure clip the weight attached uh, and I attach it directly above the diamond ball bearing swivel on the 40 pound short piece of leader that I talked about earlier and I you have to attach it directly above the swivel guys on the 40 pound side don't attach it to the 30 pound side because what's going to happen is that pressure of that heavy weight's going to cause it to slide down on top of your hook. You got to attach it ab above the ball bearing swivel on the 40 pound piece of fluorocarbon leader that you created. And don't attach it on the 30 pound side or you're going to be sorry. You're not going to catch anything. You, it's like you're going to, and that weight's going to drag across the bottom with your hook. Oh my God. I, I can remember when I first started learning how to do this, man, the, the amount of errors and I did. I did it. And how I learned how to do this stuff is that I went out there on days when I shouldn't have been out there fishing because it was rough, and I learned how to do it. I put in the time. I practiced, 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 and I still practice. So I'm very quick at using the Bloom Fisher King clips. I know how to put them on. I can do it with my eyes closed. So you can do it with your eyes closed, and you know you're good. That you're that you're set, just like tying a knot. But okay, so you're ready to set. So you power the boat forward. Like I said, I use my Rodan trolley motor, but you can you know if you don't have a trolley motor, then you can you know just bump the boat in and out of gear. If you have another angler with you, then have him set while you're powering the boat forward. I used to do all this by myself. I would set two to three lines by myself while bump trolling the boat. I'm extremely quick at doing it, but there's a, there's a, there's a system for it, and I, there's a process. So you just have to develop a process that works for you where you can be efficient, fish as many lines as you can, and all that good stuff. But I only fish two on the bottom when I'm bump trolling. 
Sometimes I'll drop a extra chicken rig if the conditions are nice so the weight goes straight down and doesn't interfere with the rest of the rigs, but I rarely do that because we're hooking up with mutton snappers, and I don't want to be dealing with smaller fish on chicken rigs when we're targeting large fish. Okay, so when you're setting the line, you got to have the clickers on. And like I said, do not get in a race when you set your lines. Don't get in a hurry, man. Take your time. Do it right the first time. You're going to catch a fish if you do it right the first time. Don't get in a rush. Catching big fish consistently requires patience and skill. Keep that in mind. Patience and skill. You have to learn how to do it. And do it in all types of conditions. And force yourself to do it at times. Because that's how you learn. Okay, that's my little pep talk for you. <laughs> so, all right, now the end game, putting the mutton snapper in a boat. And this is where I'm going to end my podcast today. Nine times out of ten, if you catch a big fish in deep water, like 200 plus feet, the fish is going to float to the top. You're going to see the mutton snapper come up and float. Now, Fish that are in the 20-pound range, they're going to fight you all the way to the top, man, especially big groupers. They're going to fight you all the way up, and so are African pompanos and big jacks. So when the fish comes up to the top, I have the client walk up the rail, and then I come in, and I quickly remove that inline weight. I like Boom, and weight comes off. I, I, I work with my client, tell him what he needs to do to keep the line tight and what's going to happen. So you got to have some communication, okay? You got to have some communication. Once the clip is removed from the swivel, then the client reels the fish to the boat and I net the fish. He reels the double line through the guides and he reels the swivels through the guides of the line, through the um through the guides on the rod, I'm sorry. And that's it. So, uh, it's very simple. But one thing I want to, you know, before I end the podcast, I'm going to, in my show notes, I'm going to talk a little bit about the rods. I didn't talk about the rods because I'm going to put them in the show notes. You have to have eyes that are built for winding swivels through, guys. So, I'm going to put this in the show notes so you can take a look and see what I use and the rods that I use for this. Now, I'll probably talk about rods down the line, but I did put them in the, in the show notes for you guys so you guys know exactly what rods I use. But that's it. That's all I got for today. All this stuff's going to be in the show notes step-by-step step that you can read. I appreciate you guys tuning in every week. Each week, I'm going to be doing something a little different as far as giving you guys some, some really good information and doing some seminar-style podcasts. So please let your friends know. Share my podcast with others. I really appreciate it. Please give me a follow on Instagram at good karma sport fishing underscore FL underscore keys. And make sure you guys check out my website on a regular basis, especially for the fishing reports, www.goodkarmasportfishing.com. Again, thanks for listening. And remember, anytime you're fishing, it's all good.